the Indian Army has been you know, rated as one of the most trusted institutions in the country. And uh, on this slide, you would see the, the, the media clipping, the newspaper clippings of the last three years. Uh, Indian Army, uh, as you all know, in fact, I should be speaking about the Indian military as such, since we have the officers from the Air Force, officers from the Air Force and the Navy as well. Uh, it has been fulfilling its constitutional obligations in like earnest. Uh, in terms of you know ensuring the sovereignty of the country, ensuring the integrity and unity of the country. And uh, this institution has also undertaken all tasks given to it from time to time. This uh, institution has also taken on responsibilities which owing to the inadequacies of other agencies that they could not handle. Like for example, on the internal security domain, uh, you see uh, you know, the bridges collapsing, uh, army is called in to, to make those. We are aware of the, uh, you know, the, the Commonwealth game bridge which came down in a couple of days prior to the Commonwealth game. And mind you, within five days, one of the engineer regiments based in Delhi constructed that bridge. Same as the case, as you've seen in Mumbai, the bridges came down, the, the overhead foot bridges, and who constructed those? The army. So in other words, the, the army, the military, is always in the forefront, and you'll find that whenever the chips are down, the administrations of various states, they always look over their shoulder towards the army. Why? Well, that's what I'm going to be speaking about. And I'll sum it up to one thing, and that is culture. Next slide. Now, culture uh, is a set of beliefs, customs, <laughs> traditions, values, and assumptions which shape the behavior of the people of that organization. Every organization is a very distinct culture. So, uh, you know, this, this culture is there uh, at the national level, this is the national culture, the, the values of which are enshrined in the constitution, which actually develops from there, is there in every organization, culture is there in every family. You know, all children over here who are today doing MBA over here, you belong to those families where the culture has made you into the leaders that you are here today. So, the culture actually defines the, next slide please, the, the success, remember this. Culture defines organizational success. Wherever you are tomorrow, when you go from here, uh, tomorrow you decide to get married, you'll have your family, you know, the culture will take you place. You want to create a culture which is going to be a fusion of the culture. You know, both wife and husband, when they come in, they come from two different families. But the fusion of those cultures is something, there's a third culture you want to create. We people, you know, when we go across into the United Nations, we create the third culture. We go with our respective cultures of our respective countries. But when we go over there, we bring those together and create the third culture. A culture which is which is contingent on cultural awareness and also respect for diversity. So culture is something which is formed in all organizations. It is shaped by the strategic leader. When I say strategic leaders, they are the epitome of affairs. You know, you have the top layer in any, in any organization uh, which comprises the strategic leadership. In the army, you have the chief, the army commanders, the co-commanders. In the case of corporate sector, where you guys will be going, it is the C-suite executives of that organization. They are the strategic leaders. It is their responsibility to shape the culture of the organization. And culture permeates down into the organization through the climate that is created by various leaders, subordinate leaders. Because it has got to be conformity with the culture. So climate is something which is a very short-term phenomenon which we all create during our tenures of three years, four years. But that climate, that ecosystem that you create has got to be in conformity with the culture of the organization. So today uh, I would uh, uh, talk about this theme that culture is ultimate which is going to make you success. And if Indian Army today, the Indian military today, for example, uh, is, is the most trusted instrument of national power, it is an account of the culture. And Based on certain important key features of our, our culture, I wish to leave behind certain thoughts with you. Because tomorrow, when you grow, and when you decide to get married with a family and children, you can create the right kind of culture for your child to grow. Because in that culture, you are going to be all the time to be on your, on your mobile phone or on your iPad. Well, the, the kid is going to start demanding. And that's what the Malaysians do today. The kid is going to demand straight away a, a mobile in five, six years. But if the mother is reading a book and father is reading a book when they get back home, the child will start reading a book. It's all culture that you shape. You'll be doing that. Same as the case when you walk, go across to a corporate house. 
it's important to know the culture of that corporate organization so that you can adjust yourself when you go you understand the values of that organization you understand how things are done because culture as i said earlier it shifts the behavior of the people of that organization so it is important for you to understand and from that point of view uh, let me touch upon some key features of the indian army's uh, culture uh, some takeaways for you to perhaps mull over on those and and uh, formulate your own ideas with regard to own takeaways with regard to culture right the first one is that it's a vision centric culture you know all organizations they have a vision dreams desires discovery your dream gets translated into vision vision is the start point of the bridge you construct a bridge which takes you from the dream and makes you realize your dreams to the end state the ideal this thing end state that you thought of when you bought your organization and that bridge is the strategy the plan that you make so vision has got to be in everyone's mind all the time and it gets translated in every organization especially ours into mission goals objectives and into timeline tasks which are carried out at various level on every day so what happens is that once you are ensuring the timely execution of various tasks the timely execution of various tasks it is leading to the timely realization of various objectives and timely realization of objectives leads to timely realization of goals and goals lead on to the mission and mission ultimately the vision it's a long kind of thing vision cannot be achieved overnight remember vision takes time vision is on a time horizon of 10 years 15 years 20 years and that's the reason when i came here i asked most of you i said what how do you see yourself 20 years from now but i intend so in with this particular you know thing today that you got you should be able to think for yourself what am i going to be after 20 years because otherwise you won't know where to go so look at that the so first thing is that our entire culture is vision centric every activity which is carried out in the organization is aimed towards attaining the vision the ultimate ideal picture which has been visualized by me for example in the army we have our 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 vision which is there is to be ready relevant and accountable instrument of national power same is the case for organizations organizations they find out certain values which will again govern to lay down the parameters for the people to operate with it we have in the army the most important value i'll just tell you you know you see this slide this is the uh, indian military academy we have this academy at uh, various ods as well but i also from there and there is a you know plaque on the ground where it is written antim path the final step and when you step over that before that you are a gentleman cadet the moment you cross that antim path you become an officer and mind you in split second the shoulders become very heavy they don't become heavy with the brass which is there on it no responsibility and that responsibility comes from here next one please just read this this is a checkwood credo this is actually etched in the mind of every soldier every officer of the indian army to pass it out from them which urges you to keep the nation the country above everything else followed by the people that you lead the men and women that you lead and your own comfort on the rest on last always and every time this is the acme this is what is going to make you great leaders tomorrow remember this and that is the reason you will find that while in service and after retirement a soldier behaves in the same manner till he dies why it is this it is this that when the war is on we will find ex servicemen leaving their villages and going to the military stations to say look i want to go to the battlefield i want to go to kanpur they clamor for getting into the battlefield as retired people 80 years old 75 years old this is what nation first followed by the people you lead and then you yourself last that spirit of sacrifice so our values of integrity loyalty duty respect selfless service moral courage courage they are all embodied in this on a core you see at the back and all all uh, organizations they have this it is very important for every organization to have the next one 
is adaptable. The culture has to be adaptable. And uh, because why I'm saying this is, uh, take the example of example when you, when you get married. There are uh, two uh, people coming from two different cultures and becoming one. One team. Two different cultures. <laughs> so in addition to matching the Kundalis and your Janam Patris, you need to also be matching the cultures. So you will find compatibility between wife and husband is always there with both the cultures of by and large shape. But if there is too much of a variance, differential between the culture and the two families, you will find tensions growing up. Why do you think a large number of marriages don't succeed? Of course, people don't have tolerance, they don't have patience. It is required. You see, forming, storming, norming, performing. Storming phase will always be there when you get together two of you. But if you have same values, same ethics, cultures are by and large same, you will find that this storming phase will get reduced. You will become one team. There was one time, we never thought that the, the women uh, would come into the army. Do you all know it? But today there is a conscious effort to ensure that we have gender equality and gender balance in the army, in the military. It's adaptation. Adapting to the social economic needs of, of the society. Adapting to the technology. Adapting to new policies of the government. You will have to do that. You know, those of you who start off with your startups tomorrow, uh, you would be uh, required to understand this culture. Ensure it is ethical, ensure it is vision centric, and ensure it is adaptable. Because certainly you will find some directions coming from the government. You just put restrictions on your certain resources, maybe finances, maybe the way you do your business. So you have to adapt. That's important. And the next one, please, is a learning culture. The culture must be made learning wherever you are. Your own enterprise, we have a learning culture in the village. Because most of you feel that you know soldiers only fight wars and they are only training for wars. No, please remember even while fighting war, a young captain or a major when he is fighting on the battlefield, asymmetric battlefield, proxy war, counterinsurgency operation, these are asymmetric battlefields. When a young major is fighting over there, that man is highly agile mentally. He has got his mental agility of the highest order you can ever think of. He is a versatile leader. And he's adapting to the situation around him. <clears throat> because within a minute, within a second, the situation changes. He has a fire coming from the terrace from front, and suddenly he finds the fire opens up from the flank. So, what ensures his safety and the safety of his men? And by achieving that, neutralizing the terrorist, his mental agility and versatility. He laid maximum emphasis on training. There are organizations, I'm proud to say who seldom actually look at this face it in right colors. So what happens is, by and large, in most of the houses which you do going to more corporate houses, you would be required to self-develop yourself. So the art of self-development you got to learn now. How do you self-develop? And the best thing for that is, every night which I did, I must share this with you, is that introspect for 10 to 20 minutes before you sleep. Pray to God, thank God for what He's given you, and then note down what are the good things that I did during the day. What are the things that I could improve upon? How I can be a better human being? Three, four columns, write down those points. And your lesson that you have learned in a day. This will take you places. It will make you far more uh, a greater learner and to be able to develop yourself. The moment you know your weaknesses, you can improve those. But if you do not know, well then someone will tell you and sack you. So it's better to self-develop. Carry out introspection of your capabilities, self-analysis, and thereafter take on measures to improve your own self. Because you'll find there are very few organizations like the military, where you'll have the institutional training, and then there are mechanisms created that people are empowered on a daily basis. Other organizations will not do it. They require you to do a job, a task, you do it well, fine, you are given counseling, you are doing a good job, and you get good marks, and you go up, that's what all. So you want to start looking at learning yourself. Self-development is very important. And we in the army, of course, when we when we uh, train our people, in my view, people think at times, you know, it's only war fighting. No. We send our people across to such institutions. We have gentlemen sitting here today. Why do we send them here? It is to understand the best practices. 
the latest trends in leadership. And it's not only to business institute, we send them all over. To make sure we are relevant, as I said, ready, relevant and accountable. To ensure relevance, we make sure that people, and there are book reviews, all messages of the Indian military in the evening, and the commanding officer is there, a new book, you know, hits the shelves, bookshelves, bookstores, the book is procured, these are of course you can get it on, the, on, your, on your mobile, you can get it on, you can get it on your iPad. The book is reviewed by one officer. He or she is given the task, okay, right, we give you a week, and then you have a discussion on it. So you will find this is the kind of culture. A learning culture has got to be created value in your organization. Only then you will succeed. Improve yourself. Also ensure your subordinates also. Your people who are under you, they are also empowered. Intellectual. They are empowered with their, you know, skills. Skills that are, that are required. Competencies that are required. Their attributes that are required. The values that are required. I talked of values. We live those values. We internalize those values. Most of the corporate officers don't do that. They don't even know. Some of them don't even, don't even display uh, you know, their, their values. If I ask you kids what are the values of this institution, I'm sure none of you know the problem. We put those <coughs> everywhere our values. I talked of you know the honor code and thereafter integrity, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, moral courage, physical courage. These values are internalized on daily basis. And this keeps the primacy of the mission all the time. Lastly, I wish to tell you is that we monitor in a very big way culture. Culture is susceptible, vulnerable to ethical decay. You know what's happening in this society. So leaders at times tend to get carried away by what people are doing, and perhaps the impunity which they which they operate doing you know wrong things at times gives a wrong impression to our leader, and that can even affect the culture of an organization. So leaders, the strategic leaders also safeguard ethical decay. And the best way of doing it is in monitoring is that leave your air conditioned offices when you grow up tomorrow, walk across into various verticals of your organization, meet people, interact with them, understand, and through their body language, through your interaction, through your interpersonal skills, you shall be able to gauge what level and what kind of a culture you have. So if you look into these things, ladies and gentlemen, in times to come, you shall be able to create a very ethical, a very robust, a very effective culture which will ensure that your organization always succeeds. Thank you.